Hi everyone. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the product rule. And so far, we've talked about the constant rule. The derivative of a constant is zero. The power rule. So you would take the exponent, multiply it by the coefficient, and then subtract one from the exponent. And then we had the chain rule, where if you had an inner function, the derivative would be the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. And today we're going to be looking at the product rule. The product of two differential functions is itself differentiable. Moreover, the derivative of f times g is the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now, the product rule is just another tool in the toolbox. It may or may not be the easiest way to go. And what you have to remember when you're taking derivatives using the simple rules is you always want to pick the one that is the easiest. Okay. Now, the product rule is going to come up if you have a product. All right. So if you look at example one here, it's the product. We have a variable in each one. And that means we can use the product rule. So the way the product rule works is we take the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. And we usually write it the way I have it written here, fg prime plus g f prime. Now, for example, one, it probably is not the easiest way to go to use the product rule, but just so I can demonstrate it to you, I'm going to use a, a simpler function. But to show you what I mean, if I was to use the power rule on this guy, it definitely would be a lot easier. First thing that I would do, use FOIL on what's here. And now I would take the derivative of that, and I would get 3x squared plus 2x plus 2, and I'd be all done. Obviously, that is the easiest way to go. But just to show you a simple function and how it would work with the product rule, I'll show you the, that way as well. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to label this f, and we'll label this guy g. And then we'll write out the product rule. So y prime is equal to f g prime plus g f prime. And then we're just going to fill in underneath. So f is x squared plus 2. The derivative of g, this guy right here, is just 1. Plus, we're going to write g. g, in this case, is x plus 1. And the derivative of f is 2x. Now I'll simplify. So over here, I have x squared plus 2. And then I'm going to distribute the 2x to each term in the binomial. So I'm going to have 2x times x. That gives me 2x squared. And then I'm going to have 2x times 1. That gives me 2x. And then final step, combine like terms. So x squared plus 2x squared is 3x squared plus 2x plus 2. All right, so obviously, you know, doing the product rule is a little bit harder than what we did here, but you'll find that we're going to look at some examples in this lesson where the product rule is the easiest way to go. But I just wanted to use a, a simple one to start us off. For number two, I would ask you to try it on your own and use the product rule and then come back when you're ready. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to label this F and label this guy G. And then we're going to write out the rule, f g prime plus g f prime. And then just fill in underneath it. So y prime is going to be equal to f, which is 4x squared plus 1. The derivative of g is just 2 plus g, 2x minus 3 times the derivative of f, the derivative of that is 8x. Now we'll simplify that. Distribute the 2. Distribute 8x to both terms here. And then last step, we'll combine like terms. And then if you're not sure and you want to check yourself, we can rewrite the function using FOIL. And then using the power rule, we would take the derivative. 
and we could see we got the same result. Now, obviously, if you had to pick, you would just go with the second method. But again, for number two, I'm using an easy one to get us started, to get you used to the product rule. Now, some of the ones that are coming up here, as you can see with number three, it wouldn't be so easy to expand. So we're just going to go ahead and use the product rule. The first thing that you always want to do is you want to label what is F and you want to label what is J. And then you want to write the rule. Y prime is equal to F G prime plus G F prime. And then you just fill in underneath. F is X squared the derivative of g. Okay, now be careful. We're going to need to use the chain rule here, right? So we're going to do the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Here's the derivative of the outside. And the derivative of the inside, we lucked out. The derivative of this guy is just 1. So I'll make a note that it's 1, but you certainly don't have to write that. And then g is x plus 1 cubed and f prime is just 2x. Now, a lot of times with these, what I ask you is for first line only. So you would stop right here. You wouldn't have to go ahead and distribute. But I'm just going to make this look a little nicer by looking at each term and pulling out the GCF. All right, so it's rewritten a little bit nicer, and now it's easier for me to pick out the GCF. So if we look at the 3 and the 2, well, there's no GCF there. There's nothing to pull out. If I look at x squared and x to the first, the GCF would be x to the first. You're always going to pull out the lowest exponents. So we know that the GCF is going to be so far x, or x to the first, if you want to write that. And then we're going to look at this guy. We've got, <clears throat> we've got x plus 1 squared, and we've got x plus 1 cubed. So the lowest exponent there would be x plus 1 squared. So now we're going to compare this to what is here. What is extra? We have a 3. We have an x. Now we're going to look at the next term. We're comparing this to this. What is extra? Well, the 2 is extra. And we have one extra x plus 1, so that would be. And if you're not sure, you would just compare. This guy times this guy should bring me back to here. Now we'll simplify that. And our last step. I want to get yourself too worried about doing that simplifying right now. What I'm really concerned about is that you understand how to do the first line. And if you can do that, I'm going to be happy. We're going to label this guy F and this guy G. And the product rule says we have F G prime plus G F prime. So y prime is going to be equal to f, which is just going to be 3x plus 2 cubed. g prime is going to be using the chain rule now. This guy, we're going to have to use the chain rule. We have derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And we're in luck. The derivative of the inside is just 1. So that's easy. g is x plus 1 to the fourth. And then the derivative of f uses the chain rule. The derivative of the outside is 3, 3x plus 2 squared. The derivative of the inside is the derivative of 3x plus 2 is 3. Let's rewrite that a little nicer. If we want to simplify this, we're going to have to find the GCF. If we compare the 4 and the 9, there's nothing we can take out of there. If we compare the x plus 1 cubed and the x plus 1 to the 4th, the lowest one is x plus 1 cubed. If we compare 3x plus 2 cubed to 3x plus 2 squared, 
the lowest one is 3x plus 2 squared. And then we'll rewrite each term. You're comparing this to this, and you're going to see what is extra. Well, we have an extra 4, and we have an extra 3x plus 2. Now you're comparing this to this. What is extra? The 9 is extra. We have an extra x plus 1 because this is cubed. This is to the 4th. And these guys match, so nothing extra there. Inside, we have 12x plus 8 plus 9x plus 9. So last step here, we have x plus 1 cubed, 3x plus 2 squared, times 21x plus 17. Primarily what we're focused on is that making sure that you can do this first line. Like I said, when I asked you to do the product rule in the early stages and you're just learning it, I'm asking for first line only, but I'm showing you what to do if you want to simplify it here. Okay, moving on to number five. We have F and we have G. And G can be rewritten as 2x minus 5 to the 1 half power. Now we're going to write the rule. We have y prime equals f g prime plus g f prime. So y prime is equal to f, which is just x. Now g prime, we're going to need to use the chain rule. So we're going to have 1 half 2x minus 5. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half and the derivative of the inside is 2. g is 2x minus 5 to the 1 half, and f prime is just 1. Let's neaten that up. Now at this point, if we want to simplify it, we want to do what we've been doing all along. We want to pull out the GCF. So if we compare x to this term, there's no GCF in terms of x and 1. But if we look at these guys, they have the same base, so we just have to look at the exponents, and we're going to pull out the one that has the lower exponent. So we're going to pull out 2x minus 5 to the negative 1 half. Now you're going to compare this guy to this guy. What is extra? Well, x is extra, so that goes here. Now you're going to compare this one to this one. Oh, that's a little confusing. This is really something that throws kids a lot. You have to ask yourself, this times what brings me back to 2x minus 5 to the 1 half power? So it would be negative 1 half plus what number equals 1 half? I'll say that again. Negative 1 half plus what number gives me 1 half? right? Negative one half plus one equals a half. You have to say this times what brings me back here. Now, that is a really tough concept. It's really more an honors level concept, but I'm just showing it to you because I think it's going to be important down the road. So we end up with y prime equals 2x minus 5 to the negative one half Inside here, we have 3x minus 5. And then the last step, we just want to write it without a negative exponent. So we have 3x minus 5 over 2x minus 5 to the 1 half power. All right, so the first step is the most important for today's purposes. And then simplifying that is a bonus shown here. when you're ready, try number six on your own and come back and check your work. We have f and we have g. I'm going to rewrite g as 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power. Write out the rule. y prime is equal to f g prime plus g f prime. 
So y prime is equal to f. g prime is going to be so it's the derivative of the outside, 1 half times 2x minus 1 to the negative 1 half. The derivative of the inside is 2. g is going to be 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power. And f prime is 2x. We'll clean that up. Pull out the GCF. For here and for here, the only GCF would be x. And if we're comparing this to this guy, we're going to pull out the one that has the lowest exponent. That would be negative 1 half. Now we're going to compare what we have here for our GCF to what's here, what's extra. Looks like we have an extra x. And if we're going to compare here again to this guy, definitely here and here we have an extra 2. And if we compare this to this, we would say, well, negative 1 half plus what gives me a half. That would be plus 1. So we would write 2x minus 1 to the 1 power. Let me say that again. Negative 1 half plus 1 gives me a half. Now we'll combine like terms inside the parentheses. And so our final answer is going to be y prime is equal to x times 5x minus 2 all over 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power. Getting to the first line is the most important and learning how to simplify is definitely a bonus. All right, let's try number seven. This is f, this is g. Now don't forget you're gonna to need to use the chain rule. f is just x plus two squared. g prime will need to use the chain rule. Derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. g is just two x plus one cubed. And f prime will need to use the chain rule, the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Let's clean that up. Now we'll pull out the GCF. The GCF of 6 and 2 is just 2. The GCF of x plus 2 squared and x plus 2 to the first would just be x plus 2 to the first. And the GCF of 2x plus 1 squared 2x plus 1 cubed is going to be 2x plus 1 squared. Okay, this compared to this, what is extra? Well, 2 times 3 is going to give me 6. If you're comparing this to this, we need to add an x plus 2. And if you're comparing this to this, they're the same, there's nothing to add. All right, this to this, they're the same, nothing to add. This and this, they're the same, nothing to add. And if we're comparing this guy to this guy, we have an extra 2x plus 1, so we need to add that. Let's clean up what's in here. So we have 3x plus 6 plus 2x plus 1. Combine like terms. So we have 5x plus 7. And the last step, we have 2, x plus 2, 2x plus 1 squared, times 5x plus 7. The first step is the most important for this lesson. And understanding how to simplify is a bonus right here. All right, so last page here. So it says, find the equation of the tangent to the following curves at the point indicated. We find the derivative. Then we're going to input the value given for x to find the slope of the tangent line at that value. And then we'll use the slope and our point in point-slope form to write the equation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative. We have f and we have g. So step one is find the derivative. 
So we have y prime, and we're going to use the product rule, f g prime plus g f prime. So y prime is equal to f, which is x. To find g prime, we need to use the chain rule, the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Write out g. Derivative of f is just 1. I'll rewrite that a little neater. You can simplify it if you want, but you don't have to. Now we're going to do step number two. We're going to find the value of the slope at the given x value. So we have our x value here and our y value here. So we want to know what is the slope at the value of 2. So we're just going to substitute 2 in for x, and that'll give us the slope at exactly x equals 2. And when we solve that, we get a value of 81. So we know our slope is 81. So now we have a point, we have a slope, we can use point-slope form. So we'll do the last step here. Let's write out point-slope form. And now we're just going to fill that in. So we have y minus our y1, which is 54. equals our slope times x minus our x1, and we know that our x1 value is 2. Now, if you're being asked to write an equation and they don't specify the form, you can certainly leave it like this, but I always like to put it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to continue on here simplifying. Distribute the 81 and then solve for y by adding 54 to both sides. So my final answer here would be right here. And we found the equation of the tangent at the given point. All right, we're going to do another one. This is f, this is g. This is our x1, and this is our y1. First thing we're going to do, step one, we're going to find the derivative. We'll write that a little neater. Step two, we need to find the slope for our value of x, which is 1. That gives us a value of 2, so we know our slope is at 2. So now we know our point, we know our slope, we can use point-slope form. We simplify that, we get y plus 1 equals 2x minus 2. And like I said, that certainly is an equation it qualifies, but I like to use slope-intercept form, so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So my final answer here is going to be y equals 2x minus 3. All right, everyone, there was a lot in this lesson. Thanks for watching it to the end. Have a great day.